If you're taking notes, the subtopic for this message is, is Jesus the only way? Is Jesus the only way? Very controversial topic. Many may say there are many ways to God, many ways to heaven, many, many different ways to get there. Well, today we're going to answer that question. Is Jesus the only way? Um, to bring you up to speed here at what's taking place in this text, um, Jesus had a, a conversation with his disciples, with his followers, uh, in John chapter 13, he told his disciples how um, he was going away, um, that he would be believing them and he's going away. He told them, you know, how he would die and how he would um, be betrayed. Uh, he even told them how Satan was against him. Hmm. Of course, when his disciples, his followers, when they, they heard Jesus talking about how he was leaving them, they were depressed. It was sad news for them. No one wants to see someone that they love go away. If you love someone, you want to spend a long time with them. You want to, to, to spend that quality time with them. You have to remember that Jesus, he started his earthly ministry at the age of 30. Um, and he only fulfilled it, or he only uh, performed his earthly ministry for about three and a half years or so. So, you know, it, it, it wasn't, he did not spend a lot of time with his disciples. And now he tells them, it's time for me to go. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving you all, and this is what's going to take place when I leave. His disciples did not want to hear that news. They did not want to hear their leader, their, their, their friend, talk about leaving them. After all, they, they, they seen Jesus heal. They, they, they seen Jesus deliver individuals. They, they, they seen Jesus doing the miraculous. They, they seen Jesus doing things that they could not even explain. And now he tells them, I have to go. They want to spend more time with Jesus, to learn more about him, to, to continue to, to, to follow after him. But Jesus says, it's, it's time for me to go. So you can understand how they felt when Jesus told them that he was leaving them. They were sad. They were depressed. They were down. And that's why here in verse number 1 of John chapter 14, that's why Jesus said what he said. He said, let not your heart be troubled. <laughs> they were depressed that Jesus was leaving them. Their, their, their leader were leaving them. They were, they were down. And, and, and Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. That word troubled here in this original language, it means stirred or agitated. In other words, don't don't worry. Uh, don't let your hearts be anxious or nervous. Don't stress or be upset. I know I've just delivered and given you some, some news that you weren't ready for, but don't let it get you down. And the reasons that your, your heart should not be troubled is because if you believe in God, <laughs> you can also believe in me. Yes. If you believe there is a God, you should also believe in me. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he, he knew that um, his disciples were worried. Jesus knew his disciples were distressed. Jesus knew that his disciples felt the anguish. Jesus knew that his disciples were perplexed. Great sinner, Jesus knows. <laughs> Jesus knows. Simply put, Jesus, he knows. You see, we're also his disciples. Mm -hmm. We're also his followers. And he knows when you are down. He knows when our hearts are troubled. And he knows when our hearts are even stirred or agitated. Jesus was trying to comfort and ease the hearts of his 
disciples. He said, let not your, your hearts be troubled. And that's for someone on today, whether you're in this room or watching by playback on social media, let not your hearts be troubled. If you're going through something, don't let your hearts be, be agitated. Don't, don't stress. Don't worry. Don't, don't be anxious. Jesus knows what you are going through. Jesus, he, he then tells his disciples in verse number two, he says, uh, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Let's look at the first part of that verse. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. Jesus was comparing heaven to a house. Um, and, and he was comparing heaven to a house with many dwelling places within the house. Now, they would have understood what Jesus was talking about at this particular time. You have to remember that when, when Jesus spoke to his disciples, he, he was trying to relate to them. He was trying to be relevant to them. He was trying to, to put things on the shelf where they could reach the shelf and take it down and understand what he was saying. Hmm. Back in those days when, when there were additions to the family, whether through marriage or, or childbirth, what they would do is they would add on to the house. So they, they, they would add additions onto the house to accommodate the growth of the family. So as the family grew, they added on additions to the house. So Jesus is, is, is talking to his disciples, and he, he's comparing heaven to a house that is, that, is, that is being enlarged or being extended. A house that, that is growing by the, by the families also growing through marriage or childbirth. So as the family grows, they have to add on to the house to expand the house to make room for more, more people coming into the house. So the disciples could, could understand what Jesus was talking about. Jesus had wisdom. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus talks to us, when God talks to us, he doesn't talk to us over our heads. <laughs> you know, we may see a vision about something. We may not understand the vision, but he'll give you the, 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 the wisdom and the understanding behind the vision later. Yeah. But, but he still tells us things sometimes we can easily yeah. understand. Yes. He then says, um, if it were not so, I would have told you. Mm -hmm. If it were not so, I, I would have told you. So here Jesus is saying, Disciples, you have to trust me on this one. Mm -hmm. you, you, you simply have to trust me. Mm -hmm. I will not lie to you. Place your trust in me. I would not have told you all these things if it wasn't true. Amen. But not only are there many mansions in my father's house, guess what? I'm going to prepare a room just for you. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to prepare a space just for you. And don't worry about if you're going to like it. <laughs> don't, 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 don't worry about if you're going to like the room that I'm preparing for you. Because not only are you going to like it, but you're going to love it. Amen. <laughs> and, and, and how do I know you're going to love it? Well, that's because I know what you like and what you don't like. Well... I know what you love and I know what you hate. As a matter of fact, I know you better than you know you. Amen. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, I knew you before you knew you. <laughs> so, so you don't have to worry about if you're going to like it. Just trust me, you're going to love it. Grace Center, Jesus knows what we like and what we don't like. Yes. God knows what we like and what we don't like. Uh -huh. But he knows what we love and what we don't love. Mm -hmm. He knows what we hate and what we don't hate. Mm -hmm. So Jesus told them, no, I'm going to prepare a space just for you. And don't worry about if you're going to like the space. Look, I know the things that you want in your room. Amen. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make sure that I take care of you. You just have to trust me on this. 
you know, when, when, when uh, family or individuals come to stay with us, um, I, I, I try to make sure that I, I get everything in, in, in order, um, Elder Dems. I, mean, I make sure that, you know, the, the, the bed is made up, they have, they have clean linen, clean towels, and, and, and so forth. Their, their, their bathroom is, is, is straight. Um, they don't nobody get no idea about coming to stay. Um, but I just I just make sure <laughs> I make sure that everything is set for them, so they're 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 comfortable. I make sure that you know we got food to eat, snacks to eat. We got we got drinks and so forth. I make sure that they're comfortable with their stay. Now I may not know everything that they like or what they don't like because I'm not I'm not I'm omniscient. I'm not all knowing. But I try to do my best to make sure that they have a, a good state. Yes. You see, God knows what we like and what we don't like. Mm -hmm. You know, and as a matter of fact, I just want to make it to heaven. I'm pretty sure I'm like everything that's there. <laughs> everything, oh, gee, that, that's that's yeah. fine, Lord. That's fine. Yeah, that's yeah. fine too. I'm, I'm just glad I'm here. That's right. I'm, I'm glad I, I made it through the pearly gates. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But Jesus told his disciples, I'm, I'm going to prepare a place. Just for you. And then it goes on, Grace, in verse number three, and he says, um, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So here in, in, in this text, when Jesus says, I will come again, what Jesus is talking about here, he's talking about the rapture. He said, I will come again. He's talking about the rapture. It's a time when the dead will be resurrected and those who are still alive at that time will be caught up in the air to meet Jesus. Mm -hmm. As a kid, they used to, to show the, 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 these rapture movies mm -hmm. and they used to scare me. I used to hate watching those rapture movies. They used to you know, show people driving their cars, and next thing you know, they they just they they they, they vanish. People can be be That's talking, right. and next thing you know, they they, they just vanish. Mm -hmm. you know, waitress can be bringing out your your food, and all of a sudden, the, the food just dropped to the floor. They they will just vanish. Mm -hmm. I I could not stand <laughs> watching those rapture movies. It was scare kid, but looking back on it. I now understand the message of the movie. Yes. Because those who place their faith in Jesus, mm -hmm. if he were to come back at any time, we would be raptured away. We will be taken away. We will, will be caught up in the sky to meet Jesus. Mm -hmm. And there are some days, Grace Center, where I cannot wait to see the rapture. Amen. I'm like, Lord, you can, you can come back any time. Right now is a perfect time to come back on my schedule. <laughs> And I, I, I understand the mercy of God and the long suffering of God, and I don't understand everything. But, but, but maybe He's just waiting for more people to receive Him. Because I'm like, Lord, listen, I'm, I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. There are certain days I'm like, you know what? I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm tired. I don't have time for this. There's so much happening in the world. Lord, you can come back and crack that sky at any time. But Jesus told His disciples, He said, you know what? I will come. Again, now the disciple Thomas wasn't wasn't quite following what Jesus uh, was talking about. Thomas did not quite understand where Jesus was coming from. Thomas wanted to know where was this place that Jesus was talking about. But it wasn't only Thomas now, because Peter, if you go back and read John chapter thirteen. At the end of around verses 36 and 37, Peter also wanted to know what Jesus was talking about. Mm -hmm. So, so they, 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 they both wanted to understand the message that Jesus was trying to convey to them. They, they thought when Jesus said, I'm going away, they thought maybe Jesus said, I'm going to another place here on earth. <laughs> they, 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 they could not understand exactly what Jesus was saying. They did not know what he was talking about when he was talking about heaven. So they had concerns. They had questions. 
But looking back on it, we know that Jesus was talking about a place called heaven. The place where there'll be no more weeping. Yeah. A place where there'll be no more pain. Yes, Lord. A place where there'll be no more stress. A place where there'll be no more sleepless nights. Oh, what a place that is going to be. There will be no, no shadows in heaven. There will be no, no darkness in heaven. There will be no fatigue in heaven. Oh, what a place it is going to be. We get a chance to sing with the heavenly choir. The, the, the colors in heaven are going to be more vibrant than the colors that we see down here. Oh, what a place it is going to be when we get to heaven. Yes. I'm going to preach a message on heaven and get more in detail one day. I may even do it in this series. I, I don't know yet. But what a place heaven is going to be when we get there. I cannot wait to get to heaven to see family and friends that have gone on before me. I'm pretty sure you can't wait to get there as well. I'm not saying you're trying to leave today, but when you do get there, you will see family and friends and loved ones and everyone that we have read about in the Bible that have placed their faith in, in Jesus and, and in God. Oh, what a place it is going to be. Uh, this is not in my notes, but the Holy Spirit dropped this in my spirit. Because a lot of people sometimes have questions about this. They they they, they say, what well, if you if you place your faith in Jesus, that's the way you get to heaven. Well, what about the people in the Old Testament? Now, that's, a, that's a good question, right? What about the ones in the Old Testament? Are they going to be in heaven? Well, watch this right here. If they place their faith in God, okay. in yeah. Jehovah, in Yahweh, God will impute that to them by them believing in him. Because watch this. Jesus has always been here, right? So even in the Old Testament, although Jesus did not come necessarily uh, as, 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 a, as a permanent thing or a temporary thing on earth, although he would show up at different times in the Old Testament as the pre-incarnate Christ, teach on pastor, he, he did not come fully into the New Testament. But in the Old Testament, if those People placed their faith in God. God still imputed that to them by them believing in God. And that way they'll still be in heaven. Although Jesus was not in the Old Testament as walking on earth. Will McDonald, the scholar, said it like this about heaven. He says, heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Amen. Let me say that again. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. But there's a but in there. And here's the but. If you want to go there, it's only one way to get there. If you want to go to this place called heaven, there's only one way to get there. And we're just about done. Watch right here. There is one way to get there, and the answer is found in verse number 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Watch this. Jesus just told his disciples not to worry. Right? Uh, he just told them that he was going to prepare a place just for them, which was a reserved spot in heaven. And then Jesus, or Thomas rather, Thomas asked Jesus for directions on how to get to the place that he's talking about. And then Jesus responds in verse number six, and he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, but, or cometh to the Father, but by me. So let's Recap that now. Jesus had a conversation with his disciples. He told them that he was leaving. He said, I'm not going to be with you anymore. Okay? But I'm leaving to go and prepare a place just for you. His disciples were, were stressed. They were depressed. They were worried. 
Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Okay? If you want to go to this place, if, if you want to go there, I am the way. When Thomas asked him the question, how can we go where you're going? Jesus gave him the answer to get to where Jesus was talking about. Because they did not understand how to get to this place that Jesus was describing to them. But Jesus told them the answer in verse number 6. Jesus was, was telling them, if you want to go to heaven, I am the way. Yes. Thomas wanted to know the answer. Peter wanted to know the answer. I'm sure the other disciples wanted to know the answer. And the answer is found in verse number 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Thomas wanted to know, and Jesus told him how to get there. Grace Center, if there was another way to get to heaven, Jesus would have told them. But Jesus only gave him one way, and that way was through him. I saw this in my studies as I was preparing, and it says, uh, he doesn't just show the way, he is the way. Yes. He doesn't just teach the truth, he is the truth. Yes. Without Jesus, you're alive, but you don't have any life. He's not just, not just showing us the way, great sinner, but he is the way. Yes. He doesn't just teach truth, but he is the truth. Amen. And without Jesus, yeah, you're, you're living, you're making it, oh, but you're not really, really, really alive. You really don't have life if you don't place your faith in Jesus. The only way to get to that place called heaven is through Jesus. Yeah. Amen. There, there are many different religions that, that, that talk about many ways to get to, to paradise or get to, to, to heaven or get to see God one day. They, they talk about different ways to get there. But they, they're breaking the law of contradiction. The law of contradiction says this. It says that, that, um, that uh, law A and law B, they both cannot be true. Um, either one is true or one is false, but they, they both cannot be true. You, 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 can't, you can't do this and do this and this to be true. It's the law of contradiction. Because with many other, many other religions, their, their tenets, the, the, their, their doctrine, what they teach is contradictory to Christianity. Christianity does not, does not, uh, it does, does not line up with what they teach. So that when you put them both together, something doesn't match. Both A and B both cannot be the same. Both A and B cannot be true. Both A and B, something is, is, is not quite right. It's the law of contradiction. Jesus says, I am the way. So despite what others may say, the only way to get to heaven is by placing your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. The only way to get to that place that is prepared for a prepared people is to place your faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. A lot of times people will Will, 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 will either pray or they'll talk about God, but they'll leave out the name Jesus. That, that, that name Jesus, it, 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 it sparks up so much controversy. It, 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 it digs into so many different people because a lot of people don't believe that Jesus was actually God in the flesh as well as the Son of God as well. They believe that Jesus was just another prophet or just some, some other man or some believe that he probably never even came. But, but Jesus, he did come and he did die and he did rise from the grave. The only Amen. way to get to heaven is by placing your faith in Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Amen. So when we talk about is Jesus the only way? Yes, he is the only way. There is no other way to get to heaven but by him. In verse number 7, it even talks about that if you have if you have seen me, you have also seen the Father. That's right. 
The works that Jesus did is just like God doing the works himself. So if you, if you want to know what God is like, look at the demonstrations, look at the characteristics of what Jesus did. Look at how Jesus walked the earth and how he had compassion on sinners and how he had compassion on those who, who were hurting. And he had compassion on the brokenhearted. If you want to know what God is like, just look at Jesus. Great sinner, the only way to have eternal life is through Jesus. Yes. Acts 4 and 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. 1 Timothy 2 and 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Romans 10 and 9 says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. John 3, 16, we all know about heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Eternal life is through Jesus. And to, to, to individuals, I'm not trying to be the bearer of bad news, but the only way to get to heaven is through Jesus. No other way is going to get you there. No matter what others may teach, what others may think, the only way to get to this place called paradise is to place your faith in Jesus Christ. You know, when we place our faith in Jesus Christ and when others do that, we as a church body just need to tell others that, hey, now that you place your faith in Jesus, the enemy is not going to roll the red carpet out for you. Mm -hmm. He's coming. He, he's coming for you. He's coming. And you have a target on your back where you place your faith in Jesus. You have a bull's eye on your back when you place your faith in Jesus Christ. And APB goes out in hell when you place your faith in Jesus Christ. He will send his imps, his demons, his devils. He'll throw everything at you to distract you and to pull you away from God when you place your faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. When you place your faith in Jesus Christ, grace and it's not like sometimes you may go into a maze. And you're trying to figure out how do I get through this maze that I'm in. You, you're making the left turn. You're making the right turn. You're, you're trying to figure out Will I ever make it to the end? Eventually, you make it out of the maze and you reach eternity because you decided to enter the maze, although there will be twists and turns along the way. And that's what life is sometimes. It's a lot of twists. It's a lot of turns. Would I rather have the twists and the turns with Jesus than without Jesus? That was so good. That's my little turn right there. I've been turning a long time. I'd rather have my twists and my turns with Jesus instead of without Jesus. Amen. Um, yes, Lord. Many of you, I would assume, you know how to get to your house. I, I'm just assuming. I'm just going to assume all of us know how to get to our homes. You, you, you came here. You know how to get here. So I'm assuming you know how to get back home. If you don't know how to get back home, uh, you still we got a problem. But I, I, I'm, I'm sure you all know how to get back to your home. But when I give instructions or directions on how to get to my house, I know how to tell others how to get to my house. Yeah, you make a right uh, off this road and you go down, you're going to see a gas station on your left, but just keep on going and keep on going. You can see a, a daycare center on the right, but just keep on going. Uh, you can see a big white house on the right, but keep on going. Then when you get around this little curve, just slow down around the curve. And you're going to see the subdivision on your left. Just turn to the subdivision. I know how to tell others 
how to get to my house. Yeah, yeah. Make a right off this road. You can see a gas station on the, the, the left hand side. Uh, you can see a daycare center further down on the right hand side, but keep on going. You can see a, a white house on the right, but keep on going. When you get to the curve, slow down, subdivision on your left hand side. I know how to tell others on how to get to my house. Make a right uh, uh, on this road, gas station on the left, keep on going. But you keep on going, daycare center on the right, but you keep on going. Uh, you see a white house on the right hand side, but you keep on going. When you get to the curve, slow down, subdivision on the left. I know how to tell people how to get to my house. But just like I know how to tell people on how to get to my house, I know how to tell people how to get to God's house. Amen. The only way Amen. to get to God's house Amen. is by believing in Jesus Christ. Placing your faith in Jesus Christ. That's, that's, those are the directions that God has given me. Now, I know how to get to my house. I, I can't tell you how to get to your house. You know how to get to your own house. But if you know how to get to, to, to your house, you can tell others how to get to your house for you. God told us directions, have given us directions and instructions on how to get to his house. Place your faith in Jesus Christ. So is there any other way? Not that I know of. The only way I know of is to place your faith in Jesus Christ. You have to come to my house. You can try another way. I don't know if you're going to get there and go another way. But I'm giving you instruction how to get to my house. Make a right. Gas station on the left. Danger center on the right. White house on the right. Get to the curb. Slow down. Subdivision on the left. That's how you get to my house. Amen. That's how you get there. You can try the other way you want to. I can't promise you. Bet you want to get there. Oh, you know how the Holy Spirit show you something like, like you already been there? I see myself right here saying the same same thing. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm, I guess we're going to be preaching this today. <laughs> the only way to get to heaven yeah. is by Jesus. Yeah. There is no other way to get to heaven but by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. If you, you can try other ways, but there's no guarantee. And according to his word, the only way to get there is by what Jesus Christ has done. Placing your faith in him. Others may not want to hear it. We'll get backlash for it. That's what the Bible says. So is Jesus the only way? According to the directions, the instructions, God's GPS system that he has given to us? Yes. Jesus is the only way. It's about placing your faith in him. Yeah, yeah go try the other ways you want to, but that's no guarantee that you're going to get there. The only way to get to heaven is by placing your faith in Jesus Christ. So, yeah. is Jesus the only way? Yeah. The answer to that question is yes. Jesus is is the only way. If there was another way, when Thomas asked him the question, he would have told him. But when Thomas asked the question, Jesus, how do we get to where you, you're going? You told us you're leaving us. You told us that you're coming back again one day. But how do we get to the place that you're also talking about? Jesus said, I am the way. The truth Amen. and the life. Amen. No man coming to the Father but by me. Mm -hmm.